Hello friends, hope you have been having a great day. We are on the last set of Gujarat Judicial Services Preliminary Examination 2019 Question Paper Analysis. And in this set, we are going to take up questions of legal and English knowledge from question number 66 onwards. Let's quickly take a look at the target audience this particular course will help. It would be students of law, lawyers and advocates who have appeared or intend to appear for various competitive exams, such as the judicial services of various states, particularly the state of Gujarat. Other competitive exams where multiple choice questions on legal knowledge have been asked and anyone who wishes to remain updated with the current trend of judicial services examinations through past year papers. So let's quickly get started with question number 66, which is from the Indian Penal Code. Now section 511 of Indian Penal Code does not apply in case of A. Attempt of riot B. Attempt of affray C. Attempt of theft and D. Attempt of murder The answer to this question is option D that is attempt of murder Now section 511 provides for punishment for attempting to commit offenses with punishable with imprisonment of life or other imprisonment it states, whoever attempts to commit an offense punishable by this code with imprisonment for life or imprisonment or to cause such an offense to be committed and in such an attempt does any act towards the commission of the offense shall where no express provision is made by this code for the punishment of such attempt. Now we can see that no provision is made by this code for the punishment of such attempt. But a specific provision has been made in the Indian Penal Code so far as punishment for attempt to murder is concerned under section 307. And that is why attempt to murder would be the correct answer. The level of this question is tough as it requires thorough knowledge of the Bear Act along with the skill of reading two sections together. This brings us to question number 67, which states, which of the following provisions of the Civil Procedure Code deals with inherent powers of the Code? Option A, Section 51, B, Section 153, C, Section 152, and D, Section 148. The answer to this question is Option A, that is Section 151. The level of this question is easy as it is a very frequently asked question. Question number 68. The state shall provide free and compulsory education to all children of the age of dash A. 5 to 10 years, B. 7 to 14 years, C. 6 to 14 years, and D. 5 to 12 years. The answer to this question is option C, that is 6 to 14 years. The answer has been provided under sec Article 21A of the Constitution of India. The level of this question is medium as it requires knowledge of the wordings of the article and is rather a memory based question. Question number 69. Within how much time an application for interim maintenance under section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code should be disposed of? A. 30 days from the date of service of notice of the application to the defendant or opponent. B. 60 days from the date of the notice of service of service of notice of the application of the defendant or opponent. C. 90 days from the date of service of notice of the application to the defendant or opponent. And D. 60 days from the date of filing of the application. The answer to this question is option B. That is 60 days from the date of the service of notice of the application to the defendant or opponent. Now, as per the third proviso of Section 125, Clause 1, whenever an application for interim maintenance or expenses for the proceedings is made, the same shall be disposed of within 60 days from the date of the service of the notice of the application to such person. The level of this question is again tough as it requires thorough knowledge of the Fair Act. Question 70 deals with Section 142 of the Indian Evidence Act. It states, under Section 142 of the Evidence Act, leading questions as to which matters can be permitted to be asked in an examination in chief. A. Matters which are highly disputed. B. Matters pertaining to character of a witness. C. 
all of these and D matters which are undisputed? The answer to this question is option D, which is matters which are undisputed. The answer is found in section 142 of the Indian Evidence Act, which states leading questions must not, if objected by the adverse party, be asked in an examination in chief or in a re-examination except with the permission of the court. The court shall permit leading questions as to the matters which are introductory or undisputed or which have, in its opinion, been already sufficiently proved. The level of this question is medium as it requires knowledge of the content of the sections. This brings us to question number 71, which states there are dash views on the issue of giving bonus to the employees. And this is an English question and it states complete the sentence using the appropriate word. The options are A modest, B adverse, C independent and D divergent. The answer to this question is option D, that is divergent. Let's look at the other options and the meaning of those terms. The term modest means unassuming in the estimation of one's abilities or achievements. This word does not fit so far as the given sentence is concerned. Option B states adverse, which is harmful or unfavorable. Option C is independent and to be divergent means trending to be different or develop in different directions. So far as views are concerned, usually the term divergent is used with it and hence this becomes the most appropriate option for the given question. Moving on to question number 72, which states, which of the following writs can be issued only against the judicial or quasi-judicial authorities? A. Habeas corpus, B. Quo Voronto, C. Mandamus, and D. Certiorari. The answer to this question is option D, that is certiorari. Now the writ of certiorari can be issued by the Supreme Court or the High Court for quashing the order already passed by an inferior court, tribunal or quasi-judicial authority. The level of this question is medium as it requires knowledge of the concept. Moving to question number 73, which is again an English language question. This question states, animals that eat flesh Select the word which closely fits the given definition. A. Carnivorous B. Vegetarian C. Herbivorous and D. Graminivorous The answer to this question is option A, that is carnivorous. We are familiar with the other terms that have been given as options here, but probably not with the term graminivorous. Graminivorous also means an animal who feeds on grass. The level of this question is easy. This brings us to question number 75, as question number 74 is a general knowledge question. Question 75 says, whoever caused death by doing an act with the intention of causing such bodily injury as is likely to cause death, or with the knowledge that he is likely by such act to cause death, commits the offense of A, culpable homicide, B, murder, C, attempt to murder, and D, none of these. The answer to this question is option A, that is culpable homicide. This answer is found in section 299 of the Indian Penal Code, which states, whoever causes death by doing an act with the intention of causing death or with the intention of causing such bodily injury as is likely to cause death or with the knowledge that he is likely by such act to cause death commits the offense of culpable homicide. The level of this question, friends, is easy as it has been picked directly from a section and is again one of the very frequently asked questions as culpable homicide and murder form two very important topics of the Indian Penal Code. Moving on to question number 77, is it, which is an English language question. It states, choose the opposite of the term mitigate. A. Abate. B. Aggravate. C. Allay. And D. Alleviate. The answer to this question is option B, that is aggravate. Mitigate means to make something bad or less severe. Aggravate means to make a problem, injury or offense worse or more serious. The level of this question is easy. Question number 79. In a summary suit, within how many days of service of summons should the defendant put in his appearance? A. 10 days. B. 
30 days, C, 15 days, and D, 60 days? The answer to this question is option A, that is 10 days. Summary suits have been provided under order 37 of the Civil Procedure Code, and this particular question has been picked up from the same order. The level of this question is medium as it requires decent knowledge of the Bear Act. Question number 81. Which of the following is correct? A. The state is prevented from making special provision for disabled by Article 15 of the Constitution. B. Article 15, Clause 3 of the Constitution prevents the state from making provision for women and children. C. Special provisions are made for foreign diplomats under Article 15 of the Constitution of India. And D. Nothing in Article 15 of the Constitution shall prevent the state from making provisions for women and children. The answer to this question is option D. That is, nothing in Article 15 of the Constitution shall prevent the state from making provisions for women and children. Article 15 provides for the prohibition of discrimination on the grounds of religion, race, caste, place, or sex, place of birth, or sex. Article 15.3 here states that nothing in this article shall prevent the state from making any special provision for women and children. The level of this question is medium. This brings us to question number 82, which states, no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for a period longer than A, one year, B, nine months, C, three months, and D, six months. The answer to this question is three months. It has been picked up from Article 22 of the Constitution of India, which states provides for protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. Here, Clause 4 of Article 22 states, no law providing for preventive detention shall authorize the detention of a person for a longer period than three months unless a. An advisory body constituting of persons who are or have been or are qualified to be appointed as judges of a high court has reported before the expiration of the said period of three months that there is, in its opinion, sufficient cause for such detention. The level of this question is tough as it requires thorough knowledge of the clauses of the sections of the Bear Act. Question number 84 is from the Code of Criminal Procedure. It states, as per section 195 of the Code of Criminal Procedure, cognizance of offences punishable under sections 172 to 188 of the Indian Penal Code can be taken on A. Police report B. All of these B. The, C. The complaint in writing and D. The oral complaint. The answer to this question is option C, that is, a written complaint. Question number 85 states, Order 17, Rule 1 of the Civil Procedure Code restricts the number of adjournments to be granted to a party to A, 3, B, 10, C, 4, and D, 5. The answer to this question is option A, that is 3. The level of this question is easy as it is one of the very frequently asked questions from CPC. Moving on to question number 86, which states, against whom shall an accomplice be a competent witness? This has been asked from the Indian Evidence Act. Let's take a look at the options here. Option A, an investigating officer. B, an accused. C, the plaintiff. And D, the complainant. The answer here is option B, that is an accused. The level of this question is easy as it can be derived from the options and basic knowledge of the Bear Act is required for the same. Question 88 is a concept-based question of the Indian Contract Act. It states, recession of contract means A, alteration of contract, B, substitution of the old contract with new, C, renewal of the original contract, and D, cancellation of contract. The answer here is option D, that is cancellation of contract. The level of this question is medium as it requires knowledge of a particular concept of the contract law. Question number 90 is from the Indian Evidence Act. It states, during re-examination of a witness, A, a matter can be introduced as a matter of right generally. B, a new matter can be introduced at all. C, a new matter can be introduced only with the permission of the court. And D, none of these. 
The answer to this question is option C, that is a new matter can be introduced only with the permission of the court. The section 138 of the Indian Evidence Act provides that for re-examination of witnesses, the re-examination of witnesses shall be directed to the explanation of the matters referred to in cross-examination. And if new matter is, by permission of the court, introduced in re-examination, the adverse party may further cross-examine upon that matter. The level of this question is tough. It requires thorough knowledge of the Bear Act and the contents of the sections. Question number 91 is from English. It states, find the correctly spelt word. A, the options have been given as follows. The answer here, the correctly spelt word is audulation. That is A-D-U-L-A-T-I-O-N. Audulation means excessive admiration or praise for a certain person. This brings us to question number 92, which is again a legal question from the Criminal Procedure Code. The question states, with regard to a case involving a commission of a cognizable offence, the police will have powers to A. Investigate an arrest without warrant only after informing the magistrate. B. Investigate except the power to arrest without warrant. C. Investigate including the power to arrest without warrant. And D investigate an arrest without warrant only after permission from the magistrate. The answer here is option C, that is investigate including the power to arrest without warrant. The explanation is found in section 2C of the Criminal Procedure Code, which defines cognizable offenses as a case in which a police officer may arrest without warrant. The level of this question is very easy as it is a very, very frequently asked question and is a concept which a person who is preparing for judiciary must definitely be aware of. Question number 94 is from the Constitution of India. It states, which of the following is not a fundamental right? A, the right to assemble peacefully. B, right to move freely throughout the country. C, the right to constitutional remedies. And D, the right to property. The answer here is option D, that is right to property. Through the 44th constitutional amendment, right to property was removed from the list of fundamental rights under Article 31 and was made a legal right under Article 308. The level of this question is easy as again, it is a very frequently asked question in competitive exams. Moving to question 95, it states, when can any communication made during marriage be permitted to be disclosed either by husband or by wife? A, in the matrimonial proceeding. B, in the civil proceedings between husband and wife. C, all of these. And D, in the criminal proceedings instituted either by the wife or by the husband against the spouse. The answer is option B, that is all of these. The answer is found in section 122 of the Indian Evidence Act, which provides for communications during marriage. It says, no person who is or has been married shall be compelled to disclose any communication made to him during marriage by any person to whom he is or has been married, nor shall he be permitted to disclose any such communication unless the person who made it or his representative in interest consents except in suits between married persons or proceedings in which one married person is prosecuted for any crime committed against the other. The level of this question is slightly tough as it requires interpretation of the section. This brings us to question number 96, which is from the Negotiable Instruments Act. It says, cognizance of an offense under section 138 of the Negotiable Instruments Act can be taken by a court only on A, a police report, B, all of these, C, an application to the sessions judge, and D, a complaint in writing. The answer to this question is option D, that is a complaint in writing. Section 142 of the Negotiable Instruments Act talks about cognizance of offenses. Here, Clause A states that no court shall take cognizance of any offense punishable under Section 138 except upon a complaint in writing made by the pay or as the case may be by the holder in due course of the check. The level of this question is tough as it requires knowledge of the Bear Act of the latest amendments and the options are quite close. 
Question number 97 is from the English language. It states, a general pardon granted by the government to political offenders. Select the word which closely fits to the given definition. A. Armistice. B. Diplomacy. C. Alimony. And D. Amnesty. The answer to this question is option D, that is amnesty. Armistice is a term which uh, sort of sounds very similar, but it means an agreement made by an opposing side to war to stop fighting for a certain time. Question number 98 states, Warrant case means a case relating to an offense punishable with death, imprisonment for life, or imprisonment for a term exceeding dash years. A, 3. B, 7. C, 4. And D, 2. The answer to this question is option D, that is 2. Section 2, clause X of CRPC defines a warrant case as a case relating to an offense punishable with death, imprisonment for life, or imprisonment for a term exceeding two years. The level of this question is easy as it is a frequently asked question. So friends, so far as the Gujarat Judicial Services preliminary exams was concerned, these were the questions from English and legal language. As you could see, there was a mix of easy, medium, as well as tough questions. Overall, the level of the paper in this regard could be gauged as medium. I hope you enjoyed this particular video series. Please do stay tuned for more of such videos. Thank you.